Hello and welcome to Galaxy Advisors. The purpose of this video is to explain how to run Condor on Amazon Web Services. This is actually part two of four. Uh, again, I'd like to acknowledge um, and a special thanks to Philip Steger at MIT for detailing the steps, again of which without his help I would have not been able to create this video. So how do you run Condor on Amazon Web Services? Well, again, as I explained in the first video, there are four major steps to run Condor on Amazon Web Services. You've, I assume at this point you've already taken care of part one. You've signed up for an Amazon account. You've entered your credit card. You were successful at a phone verification. And you're all ready now to log in to the Amazon Web Services console and set up a server and launch a new instance. Uh, and that's the purpose of this video. Then in a, a third video, if you're a Mac user, I'll explain how to set up a remote desktop. Or if you're a PC user, I'll explain how to set up a remote desktop so you can kind of control the server via either your Mac or your PC. And then finally, Step four will be set up the Condor by installing all the required software, the Java, Java 3D, MySQL, Navicat, which is optional, and Condor. Uh, then after the conclusion of those four parts, you're ready to run Condor on Amazon Web Services re with remote control from either your Mac or your PC. So let's begin this step two. Um, so the first thing is to log into Amazon console here at aws.amazon.com.console. And again, um, uh, if you click below the YouTube um, description, you'll see all these links um, listed there for you. So it's a lot easier just to copy and paste those into your browser than maybe to type it in here from the video. So at this point, um, you've um, signed in with your browser to the Amazon console. And on the far right over here, it's a sign in with AWS console. So click that. At the sign in window, um, now it'll say here's your email address. And actually, what you want to do is bullet I am returning user and use your password that you used to create your account. And sign in, then click the button sign in using our secure server. Um, after which, then you're going to present it with this menu. And you want to select, um, the, select the Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2, which is abbreviated there. And I've highlighted it and boxed it in this little red rectangle. So click on that. Now, if you want some more information about the Elastic Compute Cloud, um, it's at the aws.amazon.com forward slash EC2 link below. Or you can see it in the YouTube description. Uh, the next uh, window will appear and just click launch instance there. Uh, next, the, you're going to select the classic wizard, which should already be pre-selected. Then you just want to click continue at the bottom right. Uh, then finally, you might have to scroll down and you want to select the Microsoft Windows Server um, 2008 R2 base, and which I've highlighted here in uh, red. Um, there's a lot of servers there. You want to make sure to select the Windows Server 2008 R2 base. And by the way, the, the star next to that under the select means it's part of their tier one free for new users. Uh, next, uh, what you want to do is just uh, click continue at the bottom. Um, these are going to go through some of the instant details. Uh, again, at the next uh, window, just click uh, continue. And finally, um, click continue again at this um, additional window. Um, then finally, you're going to need to enter a name in the key box. So enter a name. Uh, it's a maximum of 10 um, characters. I wouldn't put any spaces in. And then click continue. Uh, then it wants you to actually enter a name for your key pair, which you want to create. So um, they have example J Doe key. I think I put AWS key pair in mine. Uh, then after you put in a name, you want to click on this create download your key pair, which is going to give you um, a file with the, the key pair. And at the very after you do that, uh, make sure to save it because you're going to need that. And then you're going to click continue at the bottom of the page. Now, may, again, make sure to save the key of pair file. It's going to be something, whatever name you give it, with an extension .pem. Again, this is very important because it's going to help you um, unlock an encrypted password. 
So the next step is to add a MySQL rule. So at the next page, you're going to go down and click the drop down box next to create a new rule. And then scroll down and click on MySQL. And then at the very end, click continue. Um, and here at this point, you're going to see the created MySQL. You're going to click continue. And then after um, that, uh, it's going to give you a summary page, a review of what's been um, completed. And then click launch at the bottom. And then finally, um, you're, it's going to say your instance is now running. And you'll notice that it's going to give it's being given an ID there. And what you want to do is just click close. Now the next um, page that you're going to come back to on the far left is going to say instances and you want to click on instances and then once you do you should see your instance running and then above instant actions you want to click on that box and say get Windows admin password so select that and then once you do that it's going to come back and say okay here's your instance running um, you need to now at the very bottom say choose file and navigate to wherever you save that um, PEM your key pair um, file and you're going to choose that and in this case I named mine AWS key pair and then once you've selected that file um, click decrypt password um, after which it's going to unencrypt it for you or decrypt it and it's going to say you are now connected you can now connect remotely using this information it's going to give you a long computer name and the administrators the user's name is administrator and it's going to give you um, a very complicated decrypted password so you want to make sure you save that computer name and save your password because you're going to need those two pieces of information in the remote control step to access this um, server that's running now so we um, completed two of the first two steps. You've created and signed into and created an Amazon account. You logged into the AWS console and created a server with a and launched a new instance, which is running now. And now if you're a Mac user, you're going to use step um, part 3A about setting up remote control for the desktop as a Mac. And if you're a PC user, you're going to use part 3B to set up remote desktop on a PC. Then afterwards, um, you're going to use either from your Mac or your PC, you're going to do step four and set up Condor by installing the various software. Then that will eventually give you the ability to run Condor on AWS services for the remote control from either your Mac or your PC. So that's it uh, for part two. And for the next piece is to, uh, go to part uh, 3A if you're a Mac or part 3B if you're a PC user.